Susan Templeman to uh, speak to us um, along with, sorry, along with Romana Hollywood and Peter Carroll from Bendio Bank and Catriona Swan. Please. I think I've got that around. Right. Uh, it is, look, it's always wonderful to be at Blue Fringe and it is always a really emotional event. I think we care deeply in this community about how uh, people are supported and while the Blue Fringe Committee might not make the art, they make it possible for this art to be celebrated. So thank you for that. Can I, yeah, give them another round of applause. And I'd like to acknowledge that this is and always will be Aboriginal land and pay respects to Elders past and present. Um, we have had, if you think about it, our um, challenging year started this time last year. I don't think challenging is the right word. I would rather use a four letter word that starts with S and ends with T and you can fill in the middle bits because it has been a, a really dreadful year in a whole lot of ways. And yet at the same time, we're seeing incredible uh, efforts by people to keep our communities connected, uh, whether that's online, uh, whether it's face to face in a COVID safe way. So the thing that I think one of the many impressive things about Blue Fringe is that this event is happening and it's happening with people in a room. The other incredible thing, we've talked about this wonderful uh, publication, it really is a glorious book to have on your coffee table and to pick up and look through with the works printed there. So I know I'm going to spend a lot of time uh, smattered in between my work hours just dipping into this book. So if you haven't got one, especially those who are not here in the room but are watching online, this is one to go into the online store to buy. And the other thing that I did was look into the gallery um, and it is such a beautiful virtual experience walking through that gallery and being able to click on the artworks. Uh, I have on my wall in my office in Windsor a whole series of works that have been purchased annually from these awards and so that was one of the things I was worried about this year. How am I going to take someone's work there? there is, there's one work that is in my Parliament House office from a couple of years ago and the others are in my Windsor office. Uh, and now I've worked out, I just go online, I walk through the gallery, I click on it, and it tells me really easily how I can purchase. Now, and I think that's one of the positives that we will look back and see out of COVID. It's taken our technological capacity way forward. Would have been nice if we'd had decent NBN in the upper mountains to make that possible. <laughs> and we only just got it mid COVID for a lot of us in the lower mountains. But to be able to, uh, develop those skills really fast. That has been an amazing achievement for this committee, especially to have something that is so damn professional. Uh, on done, no doubt, on tons of volunteers hours and a paper thin budget. So thank you as we, I think everyone in this room really appreciates that uh, the effort that was made to continue, not just to continue the awards, but really to take them to the next level. So with that, um, uh, look, I, the other thing I should say uh, is the creativity that is captured within the online exhibition, but you can also see in the book, is just mind-blowing. Uh, and I, my experience in our family of mental illness is that creativity is one of the uh, indicators of, of, of where, where we see mental health. It can be the dark phase, it can be the coming out of the dark phase, it can be the manic phase. There can be all sorts of different places and I see in, in my own family's experience that the creativity that comes out of those moments is extraordinary. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's always necessarily the healthiest state to be in, but we value in, in our family the things that are produced during those periods. Uh, I've often said about artists that artists don't do stuff just because they can or because they want to, they do it because they need to. And I think part of the thing about art, 
mental health and creativity for me is that they are just so tightly entwined and to celebrate that it is important and if it makes you cry that's even better and it sounds like many of these poems and stories will really touch our hearts so let's get on to who the winners of the next three awards are and I'm going to ask Catriona Swan from Bell Property one a long long-term supporter of these and sponsor and our, this couldn't happen without us I will indeed and I'd just like to say congratulations to the organizers the artists the writers for both your resilience and your creativity because um, it's a great achievement. It's one of my favourite events of the year and I agree with everybody that uh, I'm excited to be able to keep looking at it after the event and go back to the website and also share it with people. So uh, I'm going to be sharing across the world, Rhonda. Thanks. So <laughs> congratulations, everyone. Okay, so the uh, judge for the photography award was Meryl Watkins and uh, I thought a lovely comment in her little uh, bio in the book was that photography is a way for her to connect with nature and restore balance. And I think we all find ways with creativity to restore our balance. So her comments were um, that photography, like any form of art, can be very personal. And so I would like to thank everyone who entered. Every image had something to offer and it was a very real pleasure to be able to see them all. So thank you to all the entrants. I had to do a lot of thinking when selecting the eventual winners. When going through the selection process, I did look at technical aspects, but more importantly, at the connection with the viewer. I hope you all continue with your photography and it gives you as much pleasure as I get when I escape with my camera. So first of all, I'd like to announce the highly commended winner. The description from the judge was deceptively simple. This image shows wonderful technical skill and beautiful use of light and shadow both of which are emphasised by the muted colour of the cloth and the smoothness of the mask. It also evokes a strong emotional response in the viewer, perhaps of unease, perhaps of serenity, depending upon personal experience. There is a sense of story waiting to be told. And the winner, the highly commended goes to Helen Andrews for What Lies Beneath. Mm -hmm. A, a shot of the world. Great idea. It's a, it's a beautiful, very thought provoking piece. Okay. And the winner. This entry shows a strong connection with the subjects and draws the viewer in to include them. Being taken on an angle adds interest but also echoes the position and movement of the man and the dog and their connection. There is no right way to be, all that matters is being together. While the connection between the man and the dog is obvious, the portrait of the dog in the centre of the piece connects directly with the viewer, making them a part of the moment. The winner is Peter Byrne for Guardian Angel. <laughs> Special guest. <laughs> Congratulations, fabulous piece. Oh, I get to say something next. Um, look, thank you, Catriona. Uh, they are beautiful works, as are so many of those photographs. Extraordinary. And now, Peter Carroll from Bendigo Bank, well, I'm going to ask you to present the art prizes. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, how many years have you been a sponsor? I think nearly ten, well, eight of the ten, I think. Yeah, but another long, long-term sponsor. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this COVID Correct Blue Fringe Art Festival. <laughs> no, I think you've done a really fantastic job, and a lot of words have been said about that already. Can everybody hear me down the back? Yeah. You can. Thank you. I've been involved in a sort of way with the mental health in the Blue Mountains since about 2001 when my Rotary Club and I organised the first community forum on mental health issues in the mountains. 
And I was invited to get involved and come to the Blue Fringe Art Festival and to the Rami group. And I only mention that because then I got involved with Bendigo Community Bank. Bendigo Community Bank is your bank. You all have part of it. Uh, it belongs to the community. All the directors are from the community, are volunteers, and we give most of our profit back to you, back to the community, which I'm, that's just been referred to, that as part of that giving back to the community, we have supported the Blue Fringe Art Festival for I think eight out of the last 10 years. The 10, we're actually, we're in our 11th year of being open. <laughs> Thank you. I might add that we've already given more than $500,000 back to the community and that's just starting. So keep bringing your request for funding forward. We'll be only too happy to do what we can to assist. Because we do, all the board members understand the great importance of Blue Fringe Art Festival in the healing of people who have had the misfortune to suffer from mental health issues. So on that, having said, I should just add, just for your interest, we have recently opened a agency in Blackheath and we're about to open an agency in Blacksland, so expanding the area that we cover. Now, art, Blue Fringe Art. We have a highly recommended and a winner and as somebody else said, it's sad that only one person can be a winner because I believe both of these paintings were excellent. The highly recommended, Jennifer Trezai's Eight Out of Ten Men. I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm sure most of you have. It's really a remarkable piece, uh, looking like men carved in a, in a mountain. And I'll, read, I'll read the, the judge's comments. This drawing is stunning. Beautifully, expressively drawn faces, somehow very alive and real, and indeed they are. All men looking similar in some way, yet very different. They seem so familiar, their eyes telling stories I want to hear. I feel I could look at this artwork for a long time with a strong yet delicate rendering. Please welcome Jennifer Tere Trezor. And can't you tell a lower mountain person who's come up to the top of the mountain? <laughs> All rubbed up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the winner for her painting in bloom is Michelle Brown. Now, let me read the, the, the uh, judges' comments first. This watercolour is exquisite, evoking the appearance of fine silk painting. The subtle play of tones, the rhythm through the whole piece is like a dance of underwater plants, a celebration of pattern and a noticing of small shapes moving and growing. Please, uh, Michelle, come for your prize. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, all right. Uh, now to um, uh, Romola Hollywood Blue Mountain City Councillor. Uh, the council, of course, is part of a. You know, have it, if you haven't looked at the banners, that gives you a really good idea of the range of organisations that have supported this on, on behalf of us as community members. So Romola, over to you for the textile prizes. Thanks. Thank you everyone. I will also try and make sure that I can speak loudly. Can you hear me okay? Um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we uh, live today and work today the Darug and Gundungurra people and pay my respects to Elders past, present and future and particularly to their resilience in the face of colonisation of their lands that were never ceded. Um, you might hear a slight quiver in my voice, it's because it's actually very hard being here. Um, my mum my was bipolar 
and standing here um, I just uh, want to pay tribute to the strength of all the artists in sharing your stories. Uh, my mum was a poet on good days and um, I also want to say to, to Lee, your artwork is amazing. My mum would have loved it. <laughs> she was bipolar one, so she had, man, you know, um, she was um, what she called a manic depressive. And, um, but she always used to tell me how many amazing people <laughs> were bipolar. <laughs> and in fact, she was one of them. And we had an enormous amount of uh, fun as children and, um, and growing up as um, teenagers. So. Um, I do know how important art and creativity is. It was for my mum. It's also a huge privilege to be presenting the Textile Awards because um, people may not know, for many years I was actually a costume maker and uh, so I know all about fabric <laughs> and, uh, and uh, also have made little tiny set pieces which I think when we see um, who uh, um, who actually, how this plays out in terms of the awards, um, we appreciate that. So um, I will go ahead now and say congratulations to everybody who put um, in works for the textiles um, area. It must have been very, very hard for the judges to make a decision. So there are two awards, there's a highly commended and I've been asked to read out the judges' comments. So the highly commended goes to Karen Stevenson for Burn. So Karen is here. <laughs> I know we can't hug. Normally in this event I'm hugging everybody. <laughs> oh, we've got to stop. <laughs> and it's the, the judge says it's an image that pulls at the heartstrings. The concept is a tribute to the terrible fires from last year and the loss of habitat for koalas is clearly communicated. Mm -hmm. So it is a reminder of the challenges that we've had mm -hmm. and thank you for paying tri tribute and expressing that. I'm going to give a stick. I'm go <laughs> I guess I, I was just about to do that. <laughs> and I've got the right, I pulled out the right one as well. Okay, thank you. <laughs> And now we have the winner, and uh, maybe I'll read it out first. It's a, the judges said it's a, cl a clear, tremendous amount, it's clear that a tremendous amount of work has gone into this piece. The concept is an atmosphere of dreamy romanticism that's been evoked. The use of paper from children's books for all the articles adds a layer of meaning. Are we a character from a children's book? Is our persona created from the stories we tell. The Victorian women's clothing, including gloves, hats and shoes, evoke the possibility of dress-ups and the small box within a line from Alice in Wonderland suggests that we are invited to enter a world of imagination. So I'm very proud to present this award to Lavon Larkin from Los <laughs> when I saw that I just thought oh my god there's so much work it's so beautiful I've got too much time on my hands <laughs> <laughs>